Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Holy Spirit, as we always ask, may He guide our meditation that you may inherit the kingdom of God. Only the Holy Spirit can guide us into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God here in this world, right? For you to live in His kingdom whilst here in this world. I know that for many, this is an impossible dream, but it is not for the Spirit of God. Pay attention. I was thinking, meditating about the beginning of our journey with God. I already said this before, but it's worth mentioning again, because we cannot forget about who we were, never. We can never forget. We always have to remember who we were, how we lived, so that we may evaluate well what God has done in our lives. That many people forget they receive miracles, blessings, and then they go away. But when we remember who we were, then it is good, it is good for us as an example, to be an example to others as well. So when I was around 18 to 19 years old, what happened? I I was studying in the evening. I was going to college. During the day, I used to work in, in Rio. And my life was, you know, going forward. I had dreams, personal projects. I was thinking about being an engineer. I used to enjoy, you know, doing math and and I wanted to be a, an engineer. That was the goal. So, in a beautiful day, I was not yet converted. I was not yet converted. I had never met Jesus. I, I, I didn't know Him. But I was walking to work. I lived by the city center. And what happened? I was carrying a bunch of books under my arms, walking towards my workplace. And it was around 11.30 a.m., somewhere there. And what happened? I was thinking and walking. It was a, a good walk, around half an hour. And as I was thinking about my personal projects, thinking of my future, what happened? The Holy Spirit, ah, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is so glorious. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and He spoke in a way that I could never doubt. Why? Because He said to me, what is the profit? What does it profit? I was thinking of my dreams, my projects, and, you know, my life. So he said, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What profit is there? When he said this in my conscience, out of the blue, I was not thinking of God, I was not thinking of His Word, I was not thinking of anything concerning my spiritual life, nothing at all. However, I was thinking about my dreams, my personal dreams. And then when I heard that Word, immediately, I was scared, it was a shock, but a real shock, 
because that voice came out of the blue into my mind and speaks strongly like that. So I was thinking about that, which is the vast majority of people have been doing. They are thinking of the future. The majority of people are thinking of resolving their personal problems. Many want to make money, others want to have good health, others want to get married, resolve their family problems, the, you know, problems with their health, infirmity, depression, and so on. All of this is very good, it's right. It's not a sin for you to think of your future. It's not. The problem is that as long as the human soul is thinking of the future here on earth, the soul is unaware, the soul doesn't remember, the soul doesn't care at all about the things of the kingdom of God. The soul only wants the kingdom of this world. Only the kingdom of this world. And Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God. So first is the kingdom of God. And then all these things, everything else that you need, will come naturally. Because he said, he promised, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Meaning these things, the dreams of the soul will be added. So the soul, usually the human soul, is thinking of its future here on earth. But God, through the Lord Jesus himself, says, what profit is it if a man gain the whole world and lose his soul? What is the point of you conquering, you know, being rich, getting married, traveling, and ostentate a wonderful life? Or what's the point of you worrying just with your physical health, your material life, whether from a financial perspective or a material perspective in the sense of health and deliverance from depression, the desire to die, deliverance from anxiety, and so on. I know that all this is extremely important. However, the most important thing Jesus said, the first has to be the kingdom of God. First, the kingdom of God. When the Holy Spirit made me aware that it would be pointless for me to conquer what I was thinking about, my dreams and fulfilling those dreams. Whilst I was thinking of my dreams, he then came in a glorious way and said, no, it's not like that. First, the kingdom of God. Because everything that your soul conquers in this world, in other words, he was telling me, in other words, everything that your soul conquers, all the pleasure, wealth, success, and so on and so forth, all of these will be left in this world. You are going to die in your soul. Where is it going? Where is it going? Where is your soul going? So he says, whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life, meaning whoever prioritizes God's dreams, this one will find life. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And you are seeing that out there. People... You know, celebrities of this world have done extraordinary things. They've been glorified by the world. But many of them are killing themselves. That's it. 
many of them are, you know, dying due to an overdose and things of this nature. Meaning, what's the point of all the success of this world? Just for a few years or a few decades. Even if they have success and they conquer everything, they still will be downcast. Why? Because you resolve the problem with your soul today. Pay attention. If you resolve the problem of your soul today, you are healed of an infirmity, you conquer success, you have a new job, then you're going to earn more money, you bought a flat, a house, you got married, you fulfilled a dream. And what comes next? The soul will always be seeking for something new. The soul will never be satisfied in this world. Our soul is never satisfied, isn't it? I can, I can say this because I'm a human being. I know. I, I've been through and I go through many problems. But I know that the most important thing is the final destination of my soul. Because if I resolve all the problems of my soul that revolves around my soul today, tomorrow, tomorrow, Sunday, right? I will have all the problems. And tomorrow, if I resolve the problems of my soul, on Monday, I will have new problems. So my soul will always be seeking, seeking, seeking what? To, to resolve the problems of a life that lasts for 70, 80, 90, 100 years. Yes or no? You just have to think a little bit more. Go deeper into this thought. Because if you resolve the problem, it's what's happened to you and what happens to everybody. It's like this. You resolve the problem of the soul today, tomorrow there's another problem. And you resolve that problem tomorrow, after tomorrow there's another problem. And then we live our lives resolving or trying to resolve problems of our day-to-day -day life. Yes or no? Do you know why? Because the soul is insatiable. The soul is never satisfied. It will never be satisfied, ever. The soul will never be happy in this world unless if that soul is led by the Spirit of God. Unless when the glory of the Lord comes upon that person, then yes, then the person submits themselves to the kingdom of God according to his word. They live according, you know, their life is based, limited to the holy word of God. Then yes, all things will be added to them according to their needs. That's what Jesus says. First, the kingdom of God. First, the kingdom of God. It's a matter of reasoning. It's not a matter of religion, A, B, or C. It's not church, denomination, a doctrine. No, it is all about the soul. The problem of human beings is the soul. And if the soul has its problems resolved today, I repeat, there will be another problem tomorrow. And after tomorrow, there will be another. And from problem to problem, the soul will live and try to resolve the problem. When, when they resolve, right? Day after day after day. However, when the soul is, is calmed down, when the soul is, let's say, at peace, quiet, and submissive to reasoning, to intelligent faith, that on the other hand, is being led by the Spirit of God, which is the glory of the Lord in us, then the soul is at peace. At peace. The soul receives peace. Even if on the exterior there is wars, but on the inside of you there is peace. So I learned this word. The Holy Spirit gave me this word. I was not converted yet. I had nothing of God in me. But he spoke and 
that was when I immediately ran to the arms of the Lord Jesus. Then I prioritized my soul. Then yes, I placed, you know, the kingdom of God first and his kingdom came upon me. And since then, my passion is to bring to people what God has given me. May you have, dear friends, your soul satisfied with the presence of the glory of the Most High inside of you, which is the Holy Spirit. So what we pass on to you daily is not my own thing. I didn't invent, I didn't create these things. No, it's the Word of God, the Spirit of God that He is giving us and we are trying to pass it on to those who are interested in hearing and practicing. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.